Hello and welcome to this tutorial video for how I painted the wood base for Guild Ball's fisherman model Sakana. My name is Alan O'Brien, also known as Gorilla with a Brush on Facebook, uh, formerly Arizona Troll on the Privateer Press forums, although I don't go on there too often anymore. And let's get started. You can see here I have all of the bases that we're going to paint today. They're all primed black. I also have the holes pre-drilled for the models to go in later. All of these bases, I used the hardwood plank base inserts from Death Ray Designs. These are a hard acrylic. I had to do some light sanding on the top of it to help make the paint stick and then I washed them really well before priming. These just sit right into the indentation on the bases. You could also fill in the indentation with green stuff and sand it smooth. That would work too, and then you would later have to paint the planks individually. And here we see Sakana. This is the model whose base I did, and, and uh, it was requested that I do a tutorial on how to do the base. So we can see it's a nice, rich, warm brown that works really well with the model. So I'm going to be using four colors from Scale 75, two of them from their Fantasy and Games line and two of them from just their basic Scale color line. Um, however, you can use colors from whatever line you want. We need a nice uh, mid-tone brown. Bosch Chestnut's what I'm going to be using. It's a nice chocolate brown. Uh, we need a kind of a mustard yellow. That's like an Oroco in this case. Um, we need a black and then we need a dark brown. In this case, I'm going to be using brown leather. So here's that Bosch Chestnut. You can see it's a really nice milk chocolate brown. Uh, something kind of like maybe, I don't know, somewhere between Vermin Brown and Bistro Brown in the old GW line. I'm not too familiar with GW's current line to know the names off the top of my head. We're going to make it nice and thin. I'm going to test it over here on the paper just so you can get an idea. I do this a lot just to make sure that my paint is the right consistency. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my brush perpendicular to the way that the planks are going and I'm going to brush in the direction of the planks. I'm going to put it on just lots of paint here. I'm going to let it pool. I'm going to let it do whatever it wants to do. Um, the idea here is that the paint is so thin that it's not really going to give me a solid coat and all of that extra paint is actually going to give me some nice streaking effects and it's just going to help over to the overall wood look of the wood. And just so you don't get too bored, I'll finish the rest of this off camera. And you'll see the first you'll see the uh, first coat come into frame here, and it's a little streaky. So it gives you some nice wood effect already. I'm gonna go ahead and add that second coat. Again, it's okay if it pools. It's just gonna give us some nice, interesting effects on the bottom layer here. I'm just gonna keep going, doing all the bases. I'll finish the last few off camera. And here we go. That second coat's dried. You can see what I'm talking about with the streaks. Um, to speed up the process, I used a hair dryer, and I think that was a little bit of a mistake because I ended up uh, creating these little spots of color where things didn't kind of smooth out as it, as it dried. But because it's wood, it's going to look fine. All right, so here I have my Oroco on the, uh, the paint palette here. Again, it's kind of a mustard yellow. Um, you can use any tan you want. You can go for something that's more like more like a bone color or uh, even something darker tan than this. Just play around, see what works. All right, so going in the same direction, I'm going to follow the same type of property here. I don't want too much paint on my brush because I really don't want to coat everything. And I want this to be streaky. A little bit out of focus, but you'll see in a second what this does. There's really no wrong way to do this. Because it's wood, it's natural, all that, that nice uh, wood grain. Nobody can tell you you did it wrong, so just do it till you're happy. Here we go, just the camera here. So you can kind of see the effect that we have here. Already looking really, really good. Not quite the right color that I'm going for in the end, but this, the uh, wood grain is really starting to form. 
And here we see all of the bases done with that first coat of Iroku. I don't even know how to pronounce that color, but... Every one of these is a little bit different. It's just... just how it went on. But all of them, again, already kind of look like old wood. Alright, I'm going to mix up some black here. We'll see as this starts to seep in a little bit. It's not solid. It's got a little bit of opacity to it. Alright, so what I want to do here is I'm going to add some knots. Some just little dots or kind of long ovals. Um, oh, that's a little too much. Let's fix that up. Oh, mess. No, no, I don't like that. Just rub it off. It's still pretty wet. Easy to fix. Let's try that again. A little bit less paint on the brush. And you just kind of put these wherever you want them to. I mean, kind of the the grain that's forming as as I brushed the previous coat of that that mustard yellow is going to leave a few areas that just seem to just kind of scream for some knots. I'm just going to add those here and there, wherever I feel like. Don't go nuts. You know that you probably shouldn't have more than I don't know four or five of them on one of these pieces, but you know, just put a few of them here and there. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the rest of them off camera. And here you can see the results. Now one thing that wood grain tends to do around knots is it kind of creates like these you know, almost almond type shapes around the knot. The wood grain kind of follows around the outsides of the, the, uh, the shape. So I'm actually going to take some Oroko and I'm just going to carefully sort of sketch out some of that shape around the the knots just to help accentuate the realistic look of the the wood grain again sorry for this being out of focus i'm doing this on my camera phone All right, and here you can see all of the bases done. I've outlined those knots all with the Oroku, Oroko paint color. So next I'm gonna take brown leather. I'm gonna mix it about 50-50 with the P3 mixing medium. Uh, that's just the brand I happen to have on hand and it's a dropper bottle, which is nice. Um, but you can use any kind of matte medium here. Uh, this just helps keep the paint from completely separating on you when you really water it down. So then we're going to add a bunch of water and we're going to make a glaze here. And the reason I chose this particular color is because I used a lot of the brown leather in Sakana's paint scheme. Uh, for example, his pants are based in it, his hair is a mixture of black and brown leather. So there's a lot of this in the model already, so it's going to it's going to just naturally match. What I realized after I did the first coat of this was that I actually got my glaze too thin. I wasn't quite getting the rich color that I wanted. So I, I mixed up a second batch of this, a little bit thicker. Uh, here you can see the difference in terms of what it looks like on the paper. I'm going to go back in now with the new glaze that I mixed up. Uh, you might be able to see it's a little bit richer tone. There's a little bit more of the brown in the volume of paint. As we get into these layers, I do want to protect against pooling a little bit. So after I apply the layer, I'm going to take a moist brush and go back and kind of brush out towards the edges of the base. Um, take a little bit of the excess glaze off. And here you can see the first coat's done. You can see that that rich brown is starting to, to um, tint the mustard yellow color underneath. What I'm going to do before I do my second coat of the glaze, I'm going to take my black paint and I'm going to add, I'm going to accentuate some of the grain. It's almost like putting scratches into the wood with the black paint. Keep it really thin. 
keep just a little bit on your brush. You don't want to go too overboard with this, but you're just going to kind of trace the shapes of the wood grain a little bit here and there. This can also help break up the areas where maybe you got that mustard yellow color a little bit too solid and it doesn't quite look right. This can help uh, bring some of that, that grain back into those solid areas. I'll go ahead and finish the rest of these off camera. Alright, so we'll come back in. Now we're going to do our second coat of the glaze. And wow, look at that. Just that rich brown is now just really starting to pop. You'll notice I'm taking my time a little bit more with this, kind of just tracing out each plank on its own. That's because I really want to protect against pooling in this last layer. I want my final finish to be really nice and smooth and even. Now one thing you could do if you wanted a little bit of variety in your base, you could glaze each plank a slightly different hue of like brown, maybe put a little green into some of it or maybe some red into some of it so you can get a little variation from plank to plank. Uh, here I just went for the solid uh, color but you can create a lot of visual interest with that. And here we see the final dried, well, almost dried, uh, second coat on all the on all the bases. I'm going to check it against the model of Sakana, make sure that the color is right. That looks pretty good, so I'll stop there. I just need to outline the bases with the black and finish them all up. And we have our final product. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you got something out of this. Feel free to share this video if you think anyone else will find it useful. And I hope you follow me on Facebook, at Gorilla Painter. The, the page name is Gorilla with a Brush. See you next time.